Okay guys, so I just got a question about this x-ray crystallography problem you guys have on Mastering Chemistry. Um, your numbers are probably different, but this is just to explain how you would approach this. So here's what we know. We know that we have Bragg's equation, or at least a manipulated version over here on the left side. Um, I know that's not very clear, so I typed it out myself, and I retyped the question and color-coded it. Don't be afraid to write down the question on paper so that you guys remember how to do this. And then I have the real version of Bragg's equation here. And then I color-coded it so I know where things are going to go into the equation. Don't be afraid to do that either until you guys get better at reading these kinds of problems. So n, which is the um, diffraction number, is here, times lambda. And all lambda is is the wavelength. Just a fancy little Greek symbol for wavelength. Equals 2 times d, which is the um, distance, times the sine of theta. And all that is is the angle. So... Um, looking, reading this, it says x-rays with a wavelength of 100, I'm sorry, 1.70 angstroms scatter at an angle of 11.5 degrees from a crystal. If n equals 1, what is the distance between planes of atoms in the crystal that gave rise to the scattering? Okay, so all we do is we take this equation and we are going to go ahead and manip manipulate Bragg's equation to solve for what it asked us for, because it asked for the distance. Okay, so just a second, I gotta scroll down and hold this with my other hand. Okay, cool. So, all the questions asking is D, like I was saying earlier, so I solved it for D algebraically. You just Divide this side by 2 over sine theta and this side it by 2 over t sine theta. And your result is this. So what we know from reading the word problem is we know that the wavelength is really just lambda. We know the angle is really just theta. And we know that the diffraction number um, is n equals 1 um, in this case. Your numbers may be different. But all you do is you look for what the wavelength is. And after you've already solved this for whatever variable we're really looking for, we're going to put the n in here where it's pink, and it's just one. It doesn't have a unit, or it's 2 or 4 or 10 or 20. It can be any number. Well, not any number, but you guys don't need to worry about it right now. It's just a whole number, and it's unitless, and you just plug that in here. And then whatever your wavelength is, like 1.70 angstrom, you just plug that in here. And then you divide that by 2 over sine theta, which is this angle here of 11.5 degrees. You don't have to do any of that freaky um, trig stuff to it. Uh, just make sure that your calculator is set in degrees before you do this calculation instead of that uh, coordinate thing, because otherwise you'll get some weird answer. Okay, and uh, since it looks like Mastering Chemistry was going to let you guys put in the number and then indicate the unit, if you just leave this in angstroms, you'll be fine, but you'll have to specify angstroms when you enter your answer here. So if you want to convert it to something else, you guys can look up the conversion factor in your book to convert angstroms to some other unit. You're able to do that, and you guys should know how to do that at this point. Um, so please familiarize yourselves with that before the test. But that should help you solve this x-ray crystallography problem. Or, I'm sorry, x-ray diffraction crystallography problem. Okay, have a good night.